God in prayer at this time. Shall we bow? Heavenly Father, we humbly approach that throne of grace, giving thanks for blessing us with this opportunity to come together to study another portion of thy word. We thank you for your manservant that will deliver the word. We pray that the things that he is, has on his heart will, and he shares with us will be pleasing and acceptable in thy sight. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that have uh, tuned in. We pray that the lesson will be a blessing in their life. It is in the name of Jesus that we beg of all things. Let us all say amen. Now I present to you our teacher for tonight. Hello, hello, and good evening, family and friends, saints of God, lovers of the truth. Welcome to Bible study. <laughs> oh, now family, we all rise to give God glory and we still rise to give God praise for our great God is in fact, worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same the lord is great and greatly to be praised oh how magnificent how mighty how marvelous how majestic how matchless and how meaningful is the name of the lord our god we are thrilled to see you here with us and we pray that uh, this message will encourage your soul Listen, we know that no one but the Lord woke us up this morning, and we know that no one but the Lord keeps us sound and in our right mind. And so as we study the word of God, as we uh, embark upon another exciting exploration from what he has given us to know and to do, we pray that you will share this message 
with as many of your family and friends as you possibly can. We found out here at South Union that uh, if it blesses our lives, it just may bless someone else's as well. Now, to my brothers and sisters, these superlative saints of the South Union Church of Christ, you already know what time it is. <laughs> oh, how sweet it is to be a child of the King. Now, if you have your Bible, if you have your electronic devices, meet us, beat us, open up your Bible, navigate over on your electronic device, but travel with us. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And uh, we will begin reading with verse 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 3. Uh, through verse number nine. Now we know in contextuality, we actually would start with verse one and uh, we've been uh, digging away at this. So we're going to start with verse three, just for tonight. The Bible, the word of God reads, for you are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? For while one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom you believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? I have planted Apollos waters, but God gives the increase. So then neither is he that plant anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that plants and he that waters are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building. If that's in your Bible, take a moment and type into the live chat. It's time for our blessing. Amen. It's time for our blessing. And then right behind that statement, Type this in, the partnership of ministry, the partnership of ministry, amen, amen. Family, we have gone on record in saying that partnership is vitally important uh, if we want to be successful in the world. Listen, everybody needs somebody Sometimes I heard that somewhere before. Amen. Everybody needs somebody. Sometimes we were not created to not work with other people. That's why we are social beings. Amen. There has to be some kind of social interaction, some kind of mode of communication, some kind of opportunity for collaboration as we work because we've received information. Somebody going to help me preach in just a minute. <laughs> and so when it comes down to partnership, partnership is very important in every aspect of life. Partnership is important on your job. Partnership is important in your family. Partnership is important in the church. Partnership is important in society. Partnership is an important uh, aspect of politics. Partnership is important in industry. Everywhere we go, we see partnership. And partnership is important even unto the Lord, even spiritually. God expects for us to come together and become partners one of another. Let's open up the text. Family, we discussed on the past several weeks about the power of partnership, and we want to continue to stay in that vein on today. But we're reaching a little further than we reached in times past. Now, if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, beginning with verse 1, Paul is uh, teaching a very important lesson to the church there at Corinth. Of course, he has a relationship with this church. He's writing this letter actually from the city of Ephesus, but he's writing with intentionality because there are problems in this local fellowship. Now, before we castigate the 
Corinth Christians, uh, we need to remember that we have issues. Listen, everywhere we go, everywhere you see people, you're going to see problems. You're going to have issues. You're going to have situations that arise uh, because that is just common to man. But I'm encouraged to see, family, that Paul shows them that you can work through your issues. Amen. Take a moment and encourage someone with that thought. We can work through our issues. Amen. Every situation does not have to end in breakup. Every situation does not have to end in confrontation. Every situation does not have to end in severance or in even a strained relationship. Now, someone asks, how can you make good on differences? How can you get past and build above differences? Well, family, it all goes back to what Paul says and what he highlights in the text. And that is, it requires spiritual maturity. Amen. Plug that into the live chat. In order to overcome problems, it requires, it is of necessity that we grow spiritually, that we mature, that we grow up. And Paul indicates this message in the church there at Corinth. Now watch this. He says to them that I want to give you some weightier things. I, I really need to discuss some weightier matters, but you are not able to bear it. And so as infants that are not even ready for uh, as we what we used to call table food, not even ready for table food. I've got to spoon feed you. And, you know, that's how we are sometimes in the body of Christ. You know, people have to spoon feed us. They have to be careful what they say. I don't want to offend them. I don't know how they're going to take it. Listen, we can't walk around with our feelings on our shoulders. We cannot walk around on eggshells afraid to uh, encounter or uh, communicate with our brother and sister. That's why a lot of things in the church go unresolved. Are you following what I'm saying? That's why a lot of issues, even in the church, go unresolved. These matters, there's no resolution. We just glaze over them. We act like they don't even exist because we are not mature enough to handle it God's way. Amen. It's not about what I want. It's not about what you want. It's about what God wants. Amen. And if God is glorified, family, we ought to be satisfied. Amen. I say when God is glorified, we ought to be satisfied. There are families in the world, fam, and, and don't even speak to one another. Amen. Have fallen out many, many years ago. Don't even bring that subject up because we're not talking about it. But family, listen, when we grow in our walk with the Lord, we ought to grow spiritually. Amen. I don't want to just grow older chronologically speaking. I want to grow up spiritually. Amen. And so this is what Paul is saying. He's trying to get them to grow up. Now, in verse uh, number three, I want to read this one from the Amplified Version. The Bible reads, For you are still unspiritual, having the nature of the flesh, under the control of ordinary impulses. For as long as there are envying and jealousy and wrangling and factions among you, are you not unspiritual and of the flesh behaving yourselves after a human standard and like mere unchanged men? Wow. Listen to the text. Paul is saying now, in essence, you've received the gospel but you have not allowed the gospel to change you. Now, when he speaks of change, he's speaking of something that happens internally. Amen. This is not some kind of concept that happens externally. He's not talking about changing clothes. He's talking about changing mentalities. He's talking about changing passions, changing desires, changing your focus, changing your allegiance. Paul is saying that in order to deal with issues and crises of life, it requires us to handle it 
spiritually. Amen. Not carnally, but spiritually. Not fleshly, but spiritually. Not arrogantly. Amen. But with humility. Listen, we discussed on last week that in order to build a partnership, it requires humility. We have to come together. We have to humble ourselves. There's a give and a take in a relationship because we must understand that there's a bigger mission at hand than just pleasing ourselves. Are you with me in here? Amen. Someone take a moment, type into the live chat. It's not all about me. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. No, no, this is not, it's all about, not all about you. No, this is, it's not all about me. Amen. Each person has to embody and foster that mantra. Amen. It, it's not all about me. It's about us working together so that God is glorified. Are you with me? Let's dig into the text. Verse number four. Watch this. Verse number four. For when one says, I belong to Paul and another, I belong to Apollos, are you not proving yourselves ordinary, unchanged men? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Ministering servants, not heads of parties through whom you believed even as the Lord appointed to each his task. So Paul said, I understand who I am. Amen, somebody. I understand who I am. Paul did not get wrapped up in his own press clippings. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying? He wasn't reading his own press clippings. He did not believe the hype of who he was. He kept himself humble. And he says, I understand what my task and assignment is. And Apollos understands what his task and assignment is. And God has given each of us a task and an assignment. But don't lock on to who taught you Follow them because they follow Christ. But understand that at the end of the day, it is God who gives the increase. Watch this, family. Three times in the text, three times, verse 5, verse 6, and verse 7, three times Paul goes back to reference how that the glory belongs to God. Watch it now. Anything that is ever produced from his ministry, he understood that it's all about God providing increase. Oh, come here, family. It would be a better world today if we could just understand and accept, embody and execute the fact that anything we have, listen, if it turns out for the good, God gave it to me. If it turns out to be blessed, God did it. Amen. If I turn out to get the job, God gave it to me. If there's food on the table, God provided. Amen, somebody. If my family is getting along, God made that happen. Are you following what I'm saying? If, if I'm spared from an accident, spared from death, God has covered me. It's not because of how many vegetables I've eaten or how many laps I've put in into the gym today. It's not about how, how far I have run. It, it, it's not about how long I have exercised. Are you following what I'm saying? It's about God being gracious, God being kind. He's long suffering. <laughs> Somebody ought to help me lift this up just a little bit higher. Paul understood that any production that comes from my preaching, God gives the increase. If the ministry that you're working in is growing, God gave it increase. Amen, somebody. If, you're, if your family is doing well, God is covering your family. Amen. If your car is still running, God, <laughs> amen, God has strengthened out <laughs> and lengthened out 
your maintenance report. Somebody ought to talk to me in here. Amen. Amen. God, how many folk have ever been driving on E? Come on, let's tell the truth in here. Have you ever been riding around on E? You knew that before you cranked up that car, you needed to go get some gas. You knew that before you pulled into your drive, that it was going to take a miracle to get you out of your drive and back to your place of employment on the next day because you were just riding around on fumes. But watch this now. Hopefully you made it. <laughs> hey Amen. Have you ever made it? Have you ever have you ever seen that the little gas you had left in your tank, it took you a, a longer distance, far longer than you ever imagined? You, you didn't think you would could travel that far on on fumes but but god blessed it <laughs> amen now listen let's not let's not wear out his grace don't wear out his grace if we need gas pull over and gas up our vehicles but how many times has god just kept you and covered you oh somebody ought to talk back to me in here god kept me god covered me god gives the increase that's what paul is saying he said, God gives the increase. Watch this. We're getting ready to land this plane, but watch this. Watch this. Here it is. Here it is. In verse, uh, verse number six, verse number seven, the Bible reads, so neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but only God who makes it grow and become greater. He who plants and he who waters, they're equal. One aim, same importance and esteem. Yet each shall receive his own reward or wages according to his own labor. For we are fellow workmen, joint promoters, laborers together with and for God. And you, watch it now, you are God's garden and vineyard and field under cultivation. You are God's building. Do you see that in the text? Oh, family, God is still cultivating our lives. What a beautiful, beautiful scene of imagery that Paul drops on the church there at Corinth. And indirectly drops it on you and me. Amen. We are a part of God's garden, God's holy garden, God's holy establishment and we're still growing. Amen. Plants are not fully grown overnight. But it does take some time. Amen. But when we start to grow, it's God who makes that happen. Listen, partnership. If we're going to ever make it in this world and ever really make a difference in our society, we must partner with one another. And that's exactly what God has thrusted us into in this season of virtual reality. Amen. Listen, when we partner together, someone says, well, Brother Preacher, what does partnership look like? I'm glad you asked. What does partnership look like in this virtual world? As the messages go out, we share, we like, we share the messages because the algorithms, that's just a fancy word of how the data is called, amen? How it is collected and how it is promoted, how it is marketed, amen? And when we support the gospel, many men and women are encouraged all because we've chosen to partner together as one. Before Paul closes his, his dissertation in this text, he reminds the church that God has partnered with you. Amen? And listen, family, when I know that God has partnered with me, it, it does something to me. It, do, it encourages me. Amen. It encourages me because it lets me know I'm not in it by myself. Watch this now. Here's the practicality of the lesson. If God is partnering with us, God is my partner. That means he's my partner everywhere I go. Amen. 
He's my partner in the grocery store. He's my partner uh, at the doctor's office. He's my partner in my family life. He's my partner in my social life. He's my partner as I walk with him spiritually every day of my life in whatever relationship. God is my partner in whatever endeavor. God is my partner. So it gives me strength. It gives me hope. It gives me faith because I know I don't have to do it alone. Amen. I'm not in this thing all by myself. Are you with me on today? Are you with me? Listen, I want to encourage you that God is our partner. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. And let's partner together with the Lord. All right. This is a partnership in this Bible class. And we're going to extend to you another opportunity to partner with us at another level. Listen, if you'd like to partner with us in prayer or Bible study, call the number that you see at the bottom of your screen. And as we continue to work with one another, always remember that there is strength in partnership. Strength in partnership. God put us together, family, for a reason. Amen. You believe that? God put us together for a reason. There's a reason that we're together. And it's to give him glory all of our days. All right. Well, we've come to this, this part of the lesson where it's time for us to continue to pray together and God will bring us back together. Amen. Amen. Listen, as we say good night, we thank you for studying here with us and we pray that this message has been encouraging to your soul. Listen, here at South Union, you know what we say. <laughs> yeah, we love you and there's not a thing that you can do about it. Have a peaceful, prosperous and productive week and Lord willing, we'll see you back here on next week. Take care. God bless and good night. Father